All right. Well, hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today for our latest HashiCorp snapshot titled Securing Your CI CD Pipeline, or Your CI Pipeline, sorry, with Vault, uh, which will be presented by our senior solutions engineer, uh, Kabu. So today, Kabu is going to show you how Terraform can play an important role in your serverless compute deployment pipeline. Uh, he's got some slides and a great, great demo that he'll take you through today. And I would like to take a note that uh, the session today is actually being recorded. So the recording will be made available in a day or two. Uh, we will send an invite uh, or, or email with the link soon. Uh, so for today's demo, um, it's going to last about 15 minutes. Uh, and to keep the 15 minute time frame, uh, we won't have any time to answer your questions at the end. So please submit your questions below uh, through the, the demo, uh, uh, th throughout the demo, through the chat below in, in a Zoom, uh, and we'll answer them as we go. Uh, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Over to you, Kabu. Thank you. Okay, thanks for introduction. So, uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining for, uh, us for today. Uh, I'm Kabu Solutions Engineer at Hashicorp. So today I will introduce you to how to build the secure CI pipeline by Bolt. So today, so today the company has several types of pipe of the pipelines. It's not only for continuous applications delivery. Also, companies currently try to manage the infrastructure configuration in the code base, and upgrading the infrastructure is automated the pipeline too. And sometimes data operations like software updates and backup are automated by a pipeline too. So there are some challenges for making pipelines, uh, but one of the biggest challenge is how to manage the secrets uh, in the pipeline security. They need to handle uh, various types of credentials in the pipelines. When the applications are deployed on the cloud environment, uh, pipelines need to be reachable uh, to the cloud using the secret keys or service accounts. It's the same with uh, other system components like uh, Git and Slack tokens, and also a registry for the applications and the containers, et cetera. So Bolt provides a unified the secret, uh, management, secret management capabilities. A Bolt manages the life cycle of uh, many types of secrets, and Bolt can generate the secret, and also Bolt can uh, dynamically remove the generated the secret soon after it's uh, no longer, no longer uh, needed. And also, Bolt has strong uh, access control. Even Bolt token to handle a secret uh, could have the minimum privilege depending on the attributes of the client. And Bolt is able to uh, deal with several types of secrets, a uh, crowd keys for AWS, Google, etc and also the credentials for database and other middleware also can be handled by Bolt. When the pipeline needs to SSH login to the targeted VM to execute something, uh, Bolt provides the ephemeral certifications uh, passwords to the pipeline. In addition to that, Bolt has encrypted key value store uh, to store the generic data such as existing uh, secrets and also uh, secrets Bolt cannot manage the lifecycle like uh, GitHub and Slack tokens. So today, uh, I, prepared the, I prepared the minimum uh, pipeline to provision the infrastructure by Terraform. I'm using my preferred CI tool named Concourse today. Uh, the kind of uh, tools doesn't matter for Bolt, so the same pipeline can be reproduced uh, in any other tools. The pipeline's goal is to provision the AWS infrastructure based on the update of code base. It's managed in GitHub. And this uh, pipeline shows how to securely protect AWS secrets by Bolt. And this pipeline is divided into three jobs. And the first is related to the Bolt. And the second is uh, Terraform related job, uh, which uses uh, AWS secrets. It's generated by Bolt. And please remember that uh, each job in concourse is executed by Docker container. This depends on the tool, but some other CI tools have same architecture. Uh, first, I will talk about the authentic authentication to Bolt. Uh, today, I use Uproar for authentication, and this is the specialized to non-human clients, like applications, 
uh, CI tools and any servers, etc. Upload requires a set of a role and secret ID to authenticate, authenticate the client. And this is a similar to username and password, but, but secret ID can be uh, generated on demand. And also uh, can have the parameter like TTL and number of user limit. So secret ID can be removed soon after it's consumed. Uh, these two IDs should be set from different channels and each channel should have the right to generate one of them. If the channel A sets the role ID, uh, this channel should not have the right to set the uh, secret ID. Upload can have the concept uh, named role. Role is mapped to the vault policy. In this example, uh, the vault uh, role A uh, is mapped to policy named AWS read, which can generate the AWS secret. And role ID and secret ID is always uh, based on the role. The role ID can be reused to multiple client. Uh, but the different secret ID should be generated to different client. And using this ID, clients can ask for to log in and get the token to generate AWS uh, secrets. Okay, so let's start the demo. Uh, first job is uh, getting role and secret ID. A role ID is embedded in, in the Docker container in this case, which, is, which executes the job in Concourse. This role ID is generated during uh, building the container and the secret ID is generated uh, during this job. Uh, it's, important, it's important that the secret ID has the parameter uh, that it's only one time usage. And next is a telephone plan. Uh, so pipeline will log into Bolt by generating the secret ID and, uh, and then this pipeline uh, finally get the Bolt token to generate the AWS key. After getting the secrets, uh, the job will start uh, Terraform init and plan, and the token and secret ID will be removed after it's used. Okay, so let's start the provision. And this is a concourse web UI, and I will change uh, Terraform variables, instance count I call one, and let's git push, I git the add, and git commit, and let's git push, okay? And the concourse will detect uh, the changes, and the pipeline will start soon, I think. And the uh, left side of the terminal is showing the list of AWS IAM account, accounts. And uh, now you can see two uh, users, TF Workshop and T Kaburagi. Okay. And so uh, this is this is a Docker file to build the container. During the building, uh, this reads the role ID. How uh, it's now pipeline is started. Okay. Uh, during the container uh, is being built, uh, this reads the role ID from Bolt uh, by this command: Bolt read os upload etc. slash role ID, and we direct to the containers local file system named slash role ID file name. Okay, so let's wait the let's wait for finishing the first job. Now uh, executing. Oh, it's almost finished. So now uh, the job has been moved to uh, second job. So let's review the first job. Okay, this is uh, executed the script inside the pipelines. And uh, this is the output of the uh, first job of the pipeline. Uh, first is showing the role information uh, here. Uh, you can find the secret ID is only one time and the uh, uh, load ID is mapped to AWS policy. This is for generating AWS keys. And the next thing is showing the load ID. So this uh, by just a cat command here. Uh, this, uh, the load ID is read from the local file system and this was injected during building the container. On the other hand, the secret ID is made uh, dynamically in, during this job uh, by this command, both right OS upload, etc. slash secret ID. 
So having uh, this set of role and secret ID, uh, clients become able to uh, log into Vault. And the, also the secret, secret ID uh, has a parameter TTL equal 10 minutes. Uh, so even if the uh, secret ID, ID is not consumed for some reasons, uh, like failure, Vault will remove it safely after 10 minutes. It doesn't remain in the environment. In this case, it's already consumed. So I, if I try to use the same secret ID to log in, it's not working. So let's try. And secret ID is here. So Vault returns uh, invalid secret ID because it's already consumed in the second job. I hope the second job has been finished. So uh, let's get back to the pipeline. So for the second job, first job is uh, generating the AWS keys. The, uh, sorry, first job is logging the bolt by uh, this command, a bolt write or subroll login, and I specified role ID and secret ID. And in this response, bolt will uh, return the token, and this token will be redirected to ephemeral file system in the container. And the next is uh, generating keys by this command, port read AWS creates. And this command consumes uh, the token, which is uh, output from upload authentication. And AWS key is also redirected to containers file systems too. Uh, this is used by next task. Also, after generating, uh, the port token is revoked, and someone cannot generate the secret. Uh, generate the key by this token anymore. You can see the three users right now, and uh, it was originally two. You can confirm Bolt generated the new IAM account. So the next task is uh, setting AWS key. Here, by this export command, and then uh, starts a Terraform init validate and from. It's already done uh, like this. Okay. So let's start the final job to apply before moving forward. Okay. So the final job will start now. After planning, the uh, final job is Terraform apply to provision the infrastructure. After finishing this job, uh, the board will revoke the AWS key soon. So any secrets never remain in the in these pipelines. Like the secret ID, vault token, and also AWS keys, all of the secrets were revoked after the final job. And all, it means that all secrets exist only during the pipeline execution. Okay, uh, let's get back to pipeline and wait for, please wait for uh, finishing. It's now TFR price executing. And I think my uh, AWS environment is now working like this, okay. So uh, TFR apply looks has been successfully finished. And after that, the AWS key has been revoked by Bolt. Uh, so uh, it's already successful and the command is uh, so AWS deep evoke. And now uh, it doesn't show on the list I am users anymore. This means the vault removed the AWS I am account. Okay, so let me talk about the advanced topic a little about Sentinel. Uh, even if all of secrets like secret ID token and AWS keys are ephemeral, and only, only exists uh, during the execution, but it's not only 0% to leak the secret. Once it's stolen, uh, the attacker might have the right to touch to the vault. For enterprise version, vault can be protected in uh, several ways by Sentinel. One of the example is restricting the client which can access vault by setting side range or IP address really, like this. So let me show the demo. Okay. 
So uh, this is a configuration for Sentinel. In this case, the client IP address should be always this IP. And this policy is applied to specific endpoints to Vault, endpoints of Vault, like this. When the client calls these APIs, Vault validates if the client could be allowed to access the Vault, uh, these endpoints. So this is a terminal for Concourse server. A Concourse is now running on localhost. So uh, if I try to uh, hit the API, this can be reachable, uh, and the client can access the Vault API. On the other hand, the terminal, this is a terminal of the other servers. So let's try to hit the endpoint two like this. So it's uh, this client cannot uh, reach Vault uh, like this. And this is due to the uh, Sentinel validation, Sentinel IP address validation. Okay, so uh, this is advanced way to protect Vault itself. Okay, uh, that's all today's demo. Uh, thanks for joining. All right, thanks for that uh, presentation demo, Kabu. Very nice work. Um, so now I'm just looking to see if there's any uh, questions. Um, if you do have any questions, definitely do, do let us know. Feel free to, to post it here in, in on the chats. There's just one question I want to answer before that it was in the chat around um, how sure. to integrate. Uh, from a demo's perspective, it was statically configured, but obviously um, uh, in enterprise, there's some scenarios that we can use. Uh, if you look at the uh, learn.hashicorp app integration, uh, there's some great examples there around how to do that in in the real world, uh, in the real environment. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that, Dave. Um, so, well, well, folks, that brings us to the end of our session today. Uh, we hope you found it useful. Um, and there's a lot of questions about the session being recorded. So it is recorded and you, you will be getting the link soon in your emails. Uh, and so if you like what you heard today and you want to learn more about Terraform, we do have the HashiCorp Learn portal uh, at learn.hashicorp.com where you can learn more about Terraform as well as uh, some of our, our other tools. Um, we do have a uh, next app shop coming up on September 22nd called Connecting Apps Across the Cloud. So please feel free again to register at the hashicorp.com slash events slash snapshots. So thanks again for joining us today and big thank you to Kabu for presenting and demoing today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day for now and, and I'll see you soon. Take care.